To start with, you have to remove all of the grease caps. There are five per lane, and they just unscrew with a large screwdriver. Okay, with these removed, we'll just put these out of the way. Next, we have to remove the locking caps. There are two flat locking caps and three hollow locking caps on the adjusters. So with the ones for the magnets, we need to just undo these. These can be very tight. So if you find like this, they're very tight, you'll need to use a, an adjustable wrench on the magnet to be able to open this point. So when we first start the gapping procedure, we're going to start with the L-shaped tool and we want this notch to stop as it goes into the platen. So we go into the middle and we wind the adjuster counterclockwise to raise the, the platen. You can now see this slides in, but then stops at the notch. We're then going to move to the back corner. So we now come to the rear corner and we do the same. Okay, so just, just in there and it just stops. And then we come to the third corner and repeat the same process. Okay, so we're now there with this. So the next step of gapping is to set the reed switches. The reed switches are used for product recognition. So we're going to put the gapping tool in, or the adjuster tool. We'll turn it until we get it located. And now we're going to wind them clockwise until they start beeping. Okay, so we now have the beep. We're now going to go anti-clockwise until it stops. Okay, now we have to do an additional one and a quarter turns anti-clockwise. So one and a quarter. Okay, we now do the same to the rear. If you don't do one and a quarter and you only do one turn or less than one turn, you run a risk of having a platen jam error. Okay, so now anti-clockwise. One turn and a quarter. Once you've done that process, we can now press the green button and the grill is going to calibrate and check it. If that's successful, the grill will be completely gapped. So when the grill reaches a set temperature, the plan is going to come down and it's going to perform the auto calibration. It's going to be a three step. You'll see the plan make three very distinct movements. The first movement is to reference the lower limit switch. The second movement is to reference the rear reed switch and the third movement is to reference the front reed switch. It must activate in that order, in that sequence, or it will fail calibration. Each of those movements must not exceed 200 mils from the last position. gap we're going to put it into standby and we're going to reinstall all of the locking caps the locking caps are extremely important because if they're not fitted correctly the gap calibration will not hold what we normally find if you fail to lock these up tight the gapping will drift within a week so when you put these in it's very important you wind them all the way in and then do them up tight with either a wrench 
or with a gaffing tool, but as tight as you can do. So again, I'm going to use this tool. If you have the crucifix tool, you can use that. I wouldn't recommend using a screwdriver to access these because it doesn't fit and you won't get the torque required. So we're going to wind it down and it's now tight. So we're just going to give it a little extra just to stop it slipping. You don't want to use an impact wrench. If you use an impact wrench, you're going to over tighten these and potentially damage the threads. If you damage the threads, you'll need to replace the arm. Okay, so that's it just as installed. Now we're just going to do the magnets. If you have the newer style magnets with the aluminum magnet, you'll need to hold it with a wrench. So you put your wrench or your adjustable spanner, you put it into here and you would hold the magnet. This one is fit with the old style white nylon magnets, so therefore this wrench isn't useful. So I'm just going to put my finger there just to hold it to make sure it doesn't move. And then I'll give it lots of torque to ensure it doesn't come loose and then repeat the process on the back. If you can't fit the locking caps, you may need to adjust the way the grill sits via the reed switch or via the rack. You must always ensure that you fit the locking caps. And then finally, we're just gonna install the grease caps. So we're not going to do these tight, we're just going to nip them up. It doesn't need to be torqued as tight as the rest. These are just a grease cap. And that's it.